Listen to the best mini pearl I can do. Howdy! See, not very good. But howdy is a good old southern greeting, so howdy. I'm Robert McKay. I am, if you can't tell from the way I talk, a Texas hick. I am, if the title card didn't already give it away, a thorough amateur. But I think this channel fills a, a, a useful niche. Oh, niche. I'm sorry, I grew up speaking English. I grew up speaking American English. I speak Southern English. It's a niche, okay? If you want to go all fancy and snooty, it's my video. Do it somewhere else. And and I, that sounds kind of rude. I don't intend it that way. But, but yes, on my videos, I talk my way. On your videos, if you have any, you talk your way. What I want to do now is something that I, I, it just was kind of a spur of the moment thing a couple of three days ago. If I remember correctly, and either you or me is going to have to go back and check to verify this, but I believe that I have done a video of, or a review of Knob Creek Nine Year Bourbon. This is nine years see if I can't get some light on the label for you. Thoroughly amateur. This is a nine-year-old bourbon. They put it in a barrel on uh, January 8th, 2014, and selected it, and I'll get into that here directly. They selected it on February 10th, 2023. So, one year, one month, and two, or nine years one month and two days between going in the barrel and coming out of the barrel, or at least the selection. So this is a nine-year bourbon, but on the label, it says single barrel select bourbon. Now, it's a Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey. Kentucky, that's the state where they made it. Straight means that it's at least two years old and has no added coloring or flavoring. And whiskey, well, I have a video on what whiskey is. Go look at it. Bourbon is whiskey. Don't ever ask anybody, what's the difference between bourbon and whiskey? Don't ever say bourbon and whiskey. To say bourbon and whiskey is like saying Volkswagens and cars. Bourbon is whiskey. But I have a video on that, and I don't mean to jump down your throats. I apologize. But what you see is what you get on these videos. I don't have the facilities to cut and edit. And I wouldn't if I could. I hate it when every 10 seconds you can see a jump cut. And the guy, he acts like there's been no edit. But there's an edit, and, and he's editing out who knows what. I don't do that. I wouldn't if I could. I'm a wissy wig kind of guy. What you see is what you get. Anyway, back to where I was before I acted like a dimwit. This is a store pick. They got the uh, store name slightly wrong on this strip down at the bottom. It says Kelly's Liquors when it's Kelly Liquors. Uh, I, if it was me, I would have had Kelly's Liquor, but they have Kelly liquors but this is a store pick and i was in there one day and i don't remember what i was buying this was last year maybe about a year ago i'm not sure which makes it surprising to me that they had this when i went in there two or three weeks ago but i bought i got something else and I, I, I don't know the people there by name. They don't know me by name, but I speak to them when I'm in there. I, if I remember right, I have a video on the relationship with liquor stores. And there you can find that on the Bourbon Real Talk channel with Randy Sullivan. He talks about that. Various others will. It is important. You get things by being friendly and polite and human with those folks that you'll never get any other way. That's how I got my one bottle of Eagle Rare. But anyway, I was in there. I had a, a bottle or two that I was buying. 
And I believe he's the manager of that store because it's a, a chain here in Albuquerque, a local chain. And he, he said, well, we've got a store pick of Knob Creek. Would you like to try it? Of course I would like to try it. I didn't tell him that. But, you know, I'm always I'll try anything as long as I don't have to waste money on it. And by the way, they'll say, go to a bar and have a glass of it. I look at what they charge for a glass of these things. It's not worth it to me. But anyway, he had the little sample cup plastic deal you know you've seen them they put uh, uh, pico de gallo or hot sauce or whatever and, and you can sample it and i automatically i nose things now i have even when i'm not busy and not thinking tried to nose or squirrel coke but i got it up to my nose and it was delicious right then and there and i tasted it and I knew that if I could, I wanted to buy it. And I did. And this is now my third bottle. It is that good. It uh, comes from Kelly Liquors. It's their store pick. You will not find this particular bottle anywhere else. So that's why I hadn't really thought of doing this. I like to review things that anybody can find. Whiskey for beginners, not for advanced connoisseurs. But uh, this is $56.99, 57 bucks. As far as I'm concerned, it's worth at least 10 bucks more than that. Anyway, I can talk about it all day. I don't know if you heard it, but that was a nice pop. It's an artificial cork. If there has to be a cork, I prefer artificial. If it was up to me, they'd all be screw tops. There is a whole lot less fuss and muss with that. I'll grab a fresh Glencairn. Glencairn, not Glencairn. Glencairn. I won't pour much because this is just a review. But this is an artificial cork and it came out pretty good. If uh, I don't know if you could hear it. I hope so. This is 120 proof. Knob Crick. The bottles all their regular stuff at 100 proof. They bottle their select single barrel select at 120. I believe their single barrel reserve is also 120. I've not had any of that. But their stuff is so good that I don't mind it all being the same proof. You know, if they ever do a barrel strength, that'll be great. But in the meantime, 120 is good, and I like proof. I don't know that I'm a proof hound. I've never had anything above 128.2. I don't know what I would think of something that was hazmat, which is 140 or higher. And that is a, that's actually hazardous material. They won't let you fly that on an airplane because at that proof, 70% alcohol or more, it is just too flammable. This is 120, 60% alcohol, if that's how you think. And you can see it's got a nice dark color to it. And I'm not going to sit here and wait for the legs, but they're not running yet. This is a nice, viscous, oily whiskey. <coughs> and I think I'm going to see what it smells like. As always, there's honey right on top. There's honey, some kind of floral note. Now, I've never sucked on honeysuckle. My wife has. and and But though I'm an adopted Texan, an adopted Southerner, where I grew up, we didn't have honeysuckle. And so I never sucked on it and found out what it tastes like. But this floral note makes me think of honeysuckle. It may not be anything like it, but that's what it makes me think of. Of course, there's plenty of alcohol in there, but I'm getting cinnamon and butter and brown sugar. Yeah, honey butter, I think, is in there. And I like dark notes on a whiskey. That's why one of the reasons I don't drink a lot of Scottish or Irish juice, it's light. They have light notes, 
light taste, light color, a light mouthfeel. Now, I, if you get something with a higher proof than, than I can afford, you might get a, a more substantial mouthfeel out of it. But that, that's where I go when I want something light, or, or I go to Mella Corn, which is a good corn whiskey. But as a general rule, I like the dark notes and the dark color. I, I can't remember if I showed you the color. Yeah, it's just a melding of cinnamon and butter and honey and that floral note. And I have to be careful not to stick my nose too far in there. Even as it is, taking small sniffs, light sniffs, and not putting my nose too far in. I can feel my nose hairs curling because this is at, remember, 120 proof. There's something else in there that I'm having trouble identifying. Well, I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that. I... I haven't reviewed this on Distiller, but uh, you can go to distiller.com. I use my right name. I believe they, they make me put an underscore between it. But you can get my reviews of various things there, the full-fledged, written-out, detailed reviews. On this, I'm just going to take me a sip now. There at the very last, the alcohol started to burn. And and when it does that, I have to swallow, but or else it'll just keep getting worse. But then when I swallowed it, it, it tried to go down the wrong way. But basically, this does not drink like 120 proof. I first took that sip and started swirling it around in my mouth. It felt like it was 90 proof whiskey. And it isn't. It's 120 proof. You, it, you know, I, ha I do have to take some care with it. But uh, because of what I've just been saying, I forgot all that I tasted. So let me have a second sip. That is good stuff. This would be my favorite bourbon if it were always and available and affordable on my budget. But there's cinnamon, honey butter, <coughs> buttercream icing in there. I don't know if they make buttercream icing in any dark flavors, but it, it, it kind of gives me that impression like it's maybe a brown sugar buttercream icing. There is brown sugar in there. There's oak. And on the finish, I'm getting oak for days. I have oak from the front of my tongue all the way to the back of my mouth. And it's not overpowering. I have not yet, anyway, <clears throat> found a whiskey that has too much oak. But this has plenty. It's got It's got some oak to it. And the the oak on the finish is, it's still going. I am still dealing with the finish. It, it, it's morphing into a kind of a semi-sweet, almost dark, a bitter chocolate taste. And oak does that to me, too. It'll give me that uh, semi-sweet chocolate. Man, this is good. I could drink that stuff all day long. The first bottle I had, I, I reserved it for what for me were special occasions. I had a bad day at work. 
I'd, I'd take a, I'd pour a glass of it. I had a really good day at work. I'd pour a glass of it to celebrate. You know, anything that for me was special. And finally, I, I, I said, you know, this thing's down to about a quarter. Why don't I just drink it? It's so good. Why don't I just drink it? And I did. And then the second bottle, it just went into my regular rotation. And it still lasted a while. And then this uh, third bottle, it's been in the rotation. I got this not too long ago, uh, back on the 23rd of May. Uh, I don't know if you can see how far down it is. Turn it sideways because it's right about level with the label. And it'll last me a while. Eventually it'll be gone. I have never understood why anybody would buy a bottle of whiskey who likes to drink whiskey and then set it back on the shelf and never open it. They make whiskey to drink. That's why they put this stuff in the bottle and sell it to you so you can drink it and enjoy it. And boy, do I enjoy this. This is high class stuff. Now, when I'm going to upload this video, I don't know. Uh, with uh, with what I'm doing now, uh, just reviews and general videos, what I call miscellaneous videos, I don't have an order that I'm going to upload them in, so whatever strikes my fancy each week. But if you're ever in Albuquerque, go to the Kelly Liquors store at the Mountain Run Shopping Center where Juan Tabo and Eubank meet. And just ask them if they have any of their store pick of Knob Creek. By then, they might be out. I was surprised they had any on the shelf when I got this. But they might have a bottle or two left. And if they do, buy it. This thing is worth every penny of 57 bucks. It's worth more than 57 bucks. So... What would be my favorite bourbon if it were always available and I could always afford it? Extremely good stuff. The finish on that last sip I took is finally fading away. I'm finally not really noticing it there unless I, unless I focus on it. Highly, high class stuff. Highly good. And so... Let's see, how do, what, what the phrase do I want to use here? I, I can't remember which I use in each video. Let's do this. Here's to you.